Hello and welcome to the Stainforth and Kiba Canal in Thorn. Today I'm here with my team, Browning Team Osset. These are a brilliant set of lads who recently won this region of the Angling Trust Winter League on this very venue. I've only been in the team for a couple of years, but over the course of the last decade, they've won the Division One National, the Winter League Final, the Yorkshire National, and a lot of other good team events. So what I thought we'd do today is have a walk down the line, have a chat to the lads, see what tactics they use to tackle this venue, and hopefully you're gonna see plenty of fish caught along the way. Let's go and meet the captain. I'm here with the captain of the team, who's also one of my best mates, Chris Greensides. Now, Chris, you and I have been fishing mates for as long as I can remember, literally, as long as I've been match fishing or, or fishing, and you've been uh, knocking about together, really. Talk us through, obviously, your um, captaincy of Osset came about a couple of years ago. You've been in the team about five years, haven't you? Yeah, just, not, just short of five years, I think. Um... Oh, look at that, eh? Fish there, straight away. Straight away. That's Zorro. Not far up, is it? Oh, no, it's a no. prime, it's a, it's a perch. Prime perch in the mouth. They're there for number one, aren't they, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Anyone can catch roach, I've heard, mate. Yeah, boring, isn't it? So, yeah, you've been um, captain for about two years, been in the team for about five years. Talk us through some of your sort of highlights with the team. Um, I think the first thing that I can, that we, from the first year that I joined, we, we won the Division 2 National and the um, New Junction of there and Calder Canal, which mm. is obviously our um, stomping ground, if you like. Yeah. Um, from then, um, we've reached the Winter League final the past couple of years, obviously, with COVID and stuff. There hasn't oh, been winter finals and things, one thing yeah. and another. So we've got to the Winter F League final a couple of times and uh, I suppose more recently um, we came third in the feeder national yeah, that was this nice, year. That was something. Won the Yorkshire National. Won the it? Yorkshire National, second in the Yorkshire National the, the previous year uh, on the Aaron Calder New Junction Canal. The feeder thing was on the Gloucester Canal which just isn't too dissimilar to what we what we used to up here. And obviously the most recent thing what we're here for today is uh, the uh, winning our regional winter league. Yes, yeah, and that, I mean, it, it's something that I was particularly proud of, uh, even though I wasn't in the, the team every round. I mean, it, it sort of, you know, I missed the last round um, when we really pulled things back. We'll cover that a little bit later, but I mean, to be part of the, the squad and in the teams that actually beat Drennan Barnes, I mean, people rate them the best team in the world. And, you know, obviously, um, we don't want to big them up too much, but fishing against the likes of Alan Scott or Nico and Matt Godfrey every week, it does mean you've got to be on your game, doesn't it? That's it. It's um, if, if there's any if there's if there's any team in the country that you have to fish again week in week out, Barnes is probably not the one that you'd you'd pick first, is it? <laughs> no. Really, but we gave it them, and uh, yeah, and, it, and we, we came out on top. Absolutely. So today you've actually, I'm going to say you've um, led from the front, led by example, because the waggler probably isn't one of the methods you'd really associate with fishing here at Thorn. You've let the other lads, they've all done something different, you've let the other lads demonstrate what you'd consider to be the most common or more commonly used methods, but you've had a perch, you've had some nice roach, just, just talk us very quickly through the approach, mate. Just pretty, pretty simple really, just a... a uh... I think something's going to happen there, Tom. Um, two and a half gram float. A few number tens down the line. It's about eight, seven, eight foot deep where we're fishing. Yeah. Um, it is a method that does work on here. A bit further up sometimes there can be some rud on the boats. And uh, I know uh, a couple of lads have, in previous years have had a, a few good weights on. On, uh, on a waggler, but this is sort of a, a, like a, a standard approach on this canal, we'll be fishing casters at 16 metres, so on here it is probably one of the more wider sections here at Wykewell where we are today. Um, so waggler just gets you that 
pipe there. A little bit. That little bit. Just past the pole line. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And sometimes, you mentioned those big rudd. I mean, this really is an interesting venue, isn't it? Obviously, we see migratory fish come, come into the length sort of late October, early November. They're leaving sort of March time. And there's some surprises as well, isn't there? Big it, tench. It is. I mean, the first few rounds... Um, there's, there can be a bit of all sorts, a bit of sort of like lake and lean fishing. Yeah. Um, tent fishing, a lot of fish on casters. Casters is what I like to do. Yeah. Um, captures everything. There is a lot of lot of tench um, every match. I think one match got one with about 26 pound. It did. And that was a lot of tench. I had a tench in a match. I think everyone has a tench. I've never had a tench, but everybody else seems yeah, to. Yeah, everyone gets a go, don't they? Yeah, that's it. It's tench for them who want them, especially on the secret corner. Well, don't, we don't want to say so too much, Tom. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep my mouth shut about that. But there is a, an Ossic corn line secret to be gleaned if you're watching. Watch really closely for that one. So, there we are, Chris. I'm going to move down now and have a chat with Pat. I mean, obviously, we are a diverse team. We do appeal to all ages, don't we, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, in in all seriousness, we're, we're quite we're quite a young team. Um, there's a lot of us, um, like early thirties, like myself, you, um, Mickey Bowers, and uh, and that sort of in the thirties. Then we do we do cater for the the older generation. Um, there's a couple that are nearly approaching six, <laughs> <laughs> which is really knocking on, isn't it? Which really is, um, really in the twilight years of of. Uh, of their angling careers, some might say. Well, that's it, but uh, they still manage to catch a few fish. They do. Should we go down and see? We help them with the tackle uh, on the bank if they're struggling. <laughs> Very conscientious, aren't we? We are. You've got to look after the old ones, haven't you? You have, absolutely. we will be old one day. I tell you what, mate, we're not far off in, in our 30s now. Well, that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Tickle, tickle look, the tins. Look at that, I think we've up the garden. No. Right, no. Well, we'll have a wonder yeah. down, we'll say hello to Pat and we'll see. I think he, is he on red punch there, do you reckon? I think he's fishing ground bait and pinkies. Ground bait and pinkies, let's go and see how he's getting. Well, I'm here now with Pat Daly. Pat, how long have you been in the Osset team? I've been in the Osset team about seven years, I think, now. Seven years? Yeah, yeah. And what would be your highlight in that time? Oh, well, there's been a few, to be honest, but I think the, probably the Winter League final, we won that. I think that was my first year. Yeah. Uh, it's an hard one to top, to be honest. Oh, yeah. This mm -hmm. year we've managed uh, to beat Barnsley on the Winter League, which is probably this, the second. It's always nice to... To beat Barnsley. Oh, <laughs> not, absolutely. Not an easy task. I just said to Chris, you know, really, the sort of standard that we're up against is, is brilliant, isn't it? Um, and in particular, I must say, I mean, I, I missed the last round here at Thorne, but this is, if, if there's any home venue for that team, it's, it's here. It is, um, but it's, lo it's local to us all, to be honest, but... Absolutely. You know, everybody's been brought up on it round here, haven't they? Just, just talk us through that particular day, though, Pat, because um, tactics-wise, what, what was... Uh, what was all the other day? Fish to strength, really, but it was mainly catch small fish as long as you can. Yeah. Obviously, if they dry up, then go on your long lines, 60, 14 metre, 16 mm. metre. Try and catch a few a few caster fish, better roach. A skimmer or two here and there. I think there might have been one or two tench caught, maybe. Oh, that, I think that was the week before. Yeah. Uh, there's quite a lot of tench in this canal, but it's best not to fish for them. All the match, else you can end up, uh, you know, coming unstuck. Yes. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get one or two, all well and good. But I don't think we got any on the last match between the team, which I think we had six section wins out of eight, uh, which doesn't happen no. <laughs> very often for any team. So, a bit of an achievement, really. Obviously, we had a decent draw on the day and made yeah. the, and made the best of it. I want to just touch briefly. I mean, the. This area for fishing, shall we say, obviously, Stainforth and Keeper, the New Junction, the Air and Calder, I mean, we're absolutely spoiled, aren't we, in terms of good quality yes, canal fishing? Yeah, yes, without a doubt. Um, you fish these venues all year round, obviously, we've got Paul Cagle's Happy League in the summer, we've got the Winter League in the winter. 
What would you say the biggest lessons are for somebody coming to this sort of venue? Don't turn up thinking you're going to catch £30 every time because, you know, there's a lot of areas where you're not. Yeah. Just come up and set off, you know, fishing pinkies, maggots for small fish and you'll still catch better fish as well. You know, a lot of people turn up who haven't fished it before thinking they're going to catch £30 every time they sit down and obviously yeah. when you think that, it doesn't happen usually. No. Uh, but it can happen. No, I know exactly so, what you Yeah, mean. you know, come up and fish steady away and you'll still catch skimmers on, on pinkies and maggots. I mean, with that in mind, this is what you're doing now, the sort of ground bait and pinky about, what were they, about 10 metres out, 9, 10 metres? Yeah, 9 or 10 metres. I mean, this is a really good staple approach on all these venues, isn't it? Yeah, it's best to just fish until you stop catching and then move on. You just go feed it and then come back on it. So what have you put in at the start here to get this I've going? I've put four balls of uh, uh, ground bait, and I'm just fishing just over the top now, but I'm missing a few bites, so I'm probably going to go on the deck. And so I'll fish this. just off the bottom then, Yeah. Got you. Uh, I won't miss him back, but you know, he's still getting the odd one and just fish it until till you're not getting as many bites, cup another ball in, and then fish another line for a while and then drop back on it. That's the usual. I mean, if you go on it and you, and you, you catch from start to finish, you're obviously going to do very well. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's the key is it keep, yeah. keep moving and, and always make sure you're getting a few bites. Yeah, don't plunder the line to death. Mm. If you feel it's, it's going, refeed it and move on another line. You need at least three lines, maybe four, to keep moving round. If you get on a line that, that's solid, you, maybe a long line if any, yeah. stick, obviously if, you, if you're catching you stick on it. Definitely. Now, I'm all for fairness and the right to, to, to respond and retaliate Pat, so I, I have got to tell you that Chris was giving you a little bit of abuse for being one of the more senior members of the team and I, I just wondered, oh. maybe as somebody with a bit more experience looking down, you must see some faults in, 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 in the attitude of the younger members. Yes. They were alright and then he shaved his head and he looks a bit like an hooligan. He does, doesn't he? he uh, you wanna, yeah, I don't think he's... Him, would you? I mean, it's not a good example for a... A captain to looking like an hooligan, really. No, no, I'm a bit scared of him. <laughs> well, I'm scared of him, I think. I think that's why nobody said anything if you don't pick him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, I mean, rumour room, has it, is a, is a Welsh international, but I think they must be desperate, to be honest. Yeah, 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 well, that's it. But uh, I'm sure he'll. I'm sure he'll prove me wrong. Oh, that's it. Well, I'll have to see. <laughs> and he's uh, fishing a rod and line today, which. He looks pretty good. Yeah. Concentrated, isn't he? Yes, he, he is. How are you finding the um, sphere poles? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember taking a picture of you being presented with that one on the Browning Power Partner, which you and Ben owned won a couple of years ago. Yes, me and Ben were uh, fortunate enough to win on that day, which was the first, the first year of the, the Power Partner. Uh, very lucky, obviously. You're and so lucky, Pat. Now, Ben that day, to my mind, took the glory with all, the, all these carp, and you were the man who grafted out a hard earned, I'm going to say, two or three pound of perch from uh, one pound you... fifteen, of thirty perch to be exact. Thirty perch, one fifteen for mega points on the canal. So, it, uh, I think it's more skill than luck, mate. If I'm being honest. Uh, it was the right thing to do on the day. Obviously, it were, a, it were, were, were fishing terrible that day. The null junction, which it can be prolific. And it yeah. can be the opposite. So obviously, it was a, I took a gamble and just fished for perch, and it was the right thing to do on the day. Never expected to win with one pound fifteen, but it worked out pretty good. Obviously, yeah, uh, a spear, a spear pole each, and I can't fault it to be honest. I've used it ever since. I've still got my Z16, what I had before. Yeah. Uh, it's in the garage to be honest, but I've, I do use it odd times if I go carping. Uh, but I have used this for carping. I've caught carp on this pole while fishing for silverfish at commercial venues, and no problem, no puller. You know, never had a problem with it with it, fishing for carp or skimmers. I can't fault them. It's, the um, yeah, I know, I know people do always think carp are a true true test of a, a pole, but I mean, I must say, some of the fishing that we do on these canals and rivers, you know, for example, rest, resting the chub away from brambles on yeah, canals, I mean, that, that's hard enough, and you've had no problems with the strength of it, I've, you find no, it a, I've, a good pole? Some people break a section every time they go fishing, I'm not one of them people. Uh, I don't break a section on any of my browning poles, and come to that, the poles they had before, 
very rare abraca section. So sometimes it's just some people are just clumsier than others, should I say. But I haven't had a problem with I mean look at this pole, it's I've had it two years, it's still like brand new, no brakes, no no nothing, so they say it's a silver fish pole. I use it for everything. Awesome. Well we're gonna have a stroll down now and talk to Michael below it. He looks at the minute Pat, very serious. I don't know what you what you think. He can be a serious uh, young man sometimes, and rumour has it is having dry January. Mm. Uh, I'm sure he'll see it through. He's trying to get uh, on a new diet, I've been told as well. Yeah, he's trying to lose a bit of few pounds. Like obviously that's only going to do him uh, good. But it's he'll do the dry January and just drink twice as much in February. That's that's probably probably what's going to happen. <laughs> Come on, we'll go and see you, Mick. <laughs> Moved down the line now, and I'm with Michael Bauer. Now, Michael, I don't like bigging anybody up, least of all my own teammates, but he's one of the best, you know. See, absolutely brilliant angler. Good morning, and Thomas. You're catching a few fish, love, aren't you? There's odd and mate, yeah. There's a few uh, small roach, a few uh, a few hybrids, a few little hybrids, mate, yeah. And uh, bread punch is the method of attack today. Yeah, fishing bread today, Tom. Um, seems to be best bait or one of the best baits anyway on this canal at the minute um so yeah bread and uh, bread and casters mate obviously nice positive setup on that bread fishing michael by the looks of it yeah there's um there's plenty of bites tom and you, you're looking to catch a number of fish pretty quickly so positively better uh get it down to the bottom fast wet fisher uh, you know uh, wet fisher eating it well, i could be mistaken i mean Looks to be a reasonable stamper out as well, a sort of one to two ounce, aren't they, a lot of them? That's it, yeah, the, the one to two ounce, it's a really good stamper fish. Um, so yeah, um, they can be small sometimes and you tend to miss, miss a few bites, but today seems to be all right, yeah. Right, I just want to uh, ask you a few questions then about the team. So all right, yeah. It. Now, as long as I've been sort of fishing in this area, you've been associated with them, mate. How long have you been with the team now? Uh, seven or eight years. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah, so we've had uh, we've had a good time over the last few years. So it's been, it, it's been good. It's been really good, yeah. And not many people know this, but Michael's the better half of Nick Crooks and Michael Bauer partnership. Which, oh, uh, Nicky, yeah. yeah. You know, you and him have been best mates, went to school together. Yeah, we're best mates, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we're best mate, what can I say? We've fished, forever, fished together forever. Um, obviously, Nicky's moved on to Barnsley now, but... I'm still at Ossie, um, loving it here, so yeah, but still really good mates, yeah. Well, I, I just have to ask the question now, mate, you know, you're obviously the better looking of the two. Correct, yeah, that is you correct. Know, I'm, I'm sort of watching your fish, I think you're probably the better angler, so <laughs> how come he's got, you know, this brownie sponsorship and all these followers on, on Instagram and Facebook? I'm not, not quite sure. I'm um, not. I'm not quite sure, mate, I don't know how it happens, but uh, it has happened. Yeah. You know. Maybe your time is to come. You, you hopefully, know, you, you hopefully. Know, you, you can, Peak later in life, can't you? Some people can peak too soon, mate. Exactly, said, exactly they? that, mate. Yeah, like a fine wine maturing, me, you see. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I notice with that rig as well, you really take your time to lower it over your bait. I mean, you get a bite straight away. It's almost like you, you, you send it up every time. Yeah, I think it's important. They do watch it coming down in this clear water. Um, and we, with the big droppers, the big droppers that you fish with on these positive rigs, that really shows up quick once your bait gets towards the bottom. Absolutely. You've fished this canal for a long time now. Yeah. Um, obviously, it is somewhere that we do get a lot of questions on. A number of pages of our look after on Facebook, anglers coming up to have a go for the first time. Yeah. You were telling somebody who were coming to Thorn specifically for the first time, um, and they asked you, what would you do in the winter? What sort of methods would you suggest? Would this be one of them, bread fishing? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's pretty much all pole fishing, mm. um, but bread, to keep it simple, um, bread and casters, maybe a bit of hemp this time of year, but yeah. keep it simple. Uh, positive rigs. You're trying to catch, like I say, a, a lot of fish, a number of fish. So, uh, so yeah, just keep it simple, a couple of baits. Um, and that's it, really. Alex, um, oh. If ever there was a good demonstration for how effective bread fishing is, 
you're watching it now. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know how many fish is, is, is caught while we've been talking, but you can certainly see he's in and out very, very quickly. Just talk us through, if you would, your, your terminal setup down this bottom. All what right, yeah, there? yeah. So, uh, um, so positive float, pencil float there. Yeah. Um, 0.8 this one is, so I've got a 0.6 Olivet and then two number 8 droppers, nice positive droppers, pretty close together, nice short hook length, um, 07 hook length and then a 20 fine hook with a long shank, um, I think that long shank's important because it helps you it helps you put your bread on pretty quick and unhook the fish pretty quick, um, gives you something to grab onto with your fingers, especially in the cold, that short, that uh, long shank here hook, so yeah, everything, uh, everything positive. Love it. And you've got the, you got the Z9? Tis, yes. Z92, yeah. Um, you had that a while, haven't you? I've had it three years, I think, or just over three years. Uh, it's without a doubt best pole I've ever had. Um, a lot of my fishing in summer anyway revolves around um, a lot of natural fishing on rivers and deep venues. Um, so I need something what's strong. Um, I fish a lot at Yorkshire rivers uh, in summer um, and go to Ireland two or three weeks a year also. Um, and it demands a strong pole. Um, this has never let me down for three years. Um, it's been a fantastic bit of kit, uh, and it's still going strong now. Three years, three years on, like. Love it. I'm gonna walk down and see Ben Taylor in a minute. My um, mate Ben. Before I do, mate, I've got to ask you. Go on. Obviously, the anglers have got line in the bank today. Fairly typical of, of us. It. We've got Chris Greenside who's carrying a few extra pounds. You've got myself who's. <laughs> You know, portly at the best of times. Got a bit, bit extra around the front. You've got Ben Taylor and Ben Holmes. Are the same could be said. You know, yeah. slightly, slightly overweight, carrying a bit of extra tonnage. Yeah. Pat obviously wouldn't have got to his age if he was carrying extra weight. So yeah. We'll leave him out. You're very svelte. Just talk us through your your diet and fitness regime because it's new for January, I'm told. Oh, it is new year, new me, and all that. Yeah. So uh, it's a new, it's a new, it's a new diet I'm on. Dry January. It's going strong. Two weeks in, no drinking yet. Yeah. Um. So that's you know. That doesn't happen very often with me, but I'm two weeks in. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a new diet, um, so hopefully shed a few pounds after Christmas festivities. Festive, so no nibbling on the bread then while you're fishing, mate? No, mate, no bread allowed on this diet I'm on, unfortunately. No food allowed, <laughs> hardly. That's it, a bit of fasting. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work, mate, yeah. Okay, you're, uh, Tom. Bag it up, and I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. No worries. Well, the man I'm with now has been absolutely on fire this year. I don't think there's, I can't think of a team match that I fish where you've not won your section, mate. You've had a right season. I do try, Tom, I do try, but you've got to draw the pegs as well, mate. Well, you have, mate, but uh, you've certainly been on fire. This, of course, is Ben Taylor, and he's showing us something a little bit different today. Um, obviously, we've seen these small fish tactics that Michael and Pat are doing. And although Ben's actually catching his fish at the moment, we're trying to catch some better skimmers on that line, mate, aren't we? I'm trying to, yeah, just catch some better stamp fish. I mean, and that's a good rope, though. Yeah, they're still, you know, they're a nice size of stamp compared to what you catch on sort of bread or pinkies. And yeah. sometimes I find on here that you become can be very busy, but you don't accumulate the weight you need. Yeah. In a in. In certain matches to to win sections or yeah. to um, the pole one, the yeah, as mate, because I, I didn't want to put it in there. But. Ah, because I win you well, messing, <laughs> messing everything up as well. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, to to win sections or or framing matches, and, and I thought you find usually on this canal that you need double figures every match. Yeah, to frame, and sometimes depending on the stamp you're catching on bread, you just can't do that. No, no. Um, so obviously. Cause true 16 metres that way you're fishing there by the looks in it, it is so. mate yeah it is and how have you fed that on this line i'm on currently i've just yeah. potted um potted sort of like 30 40 casters um and then i've done the same to my right on the same depth just find a, a nice depth where you can do two things at the same depth and at the minute i've not had to do anything else apart from potting but i've always got the opportunity then to um to pick my catapult up on one if I need to, yeah. to try um, and make something happen. But like I say, currently we're not having to do that. No, no. no. I mean, even obviously, that's fed with big fish in mind. It's still about a bite of chuck out there. Yeah, right? it is. And the roach you're catching are notably bigger than what you get short. Yeah, they? they're a better, definitely a better stamp out there. I mean, obviously you've got to do the shipping and stuff, but instead of having to catch sort of 250 fish on a 
bread line, all of a sudden you've got to catch a hundred fish to, to catch that magic double figures, what I call them here. Yeah. Which I, I honestly believe is probably doable when it's on its day, this canal is doable on every peg on canal. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to be at a, it, it makes everything a bit easier and you've always got chance of, or I've always got chance of a tench because, uh, or, or a bigger fish. Yes. Because they seem to follow me wherever I go on this canal at minute, Tom. So well, uh, I've been told by Chris, I wanted to ask you all about the secret corn line today, <laughs> but I, I can't because he just seems to catch a tench everywhere he sits. That is, uh, <laughs> that is true. Look, I want to ask you, mate, a little bit about your sort of family history and Osset because uh, not just yourself, your dad couldn't be with us today, but he's no. uh, Dave Taylor, has done so much for the team over the years, hasn't he? Yeah, um, he has. Just talk to me about obviously how long you've been involved with it all. Now, this makes me feel old, mate, and I'm not actually that old. Well, I'm old enough, but uh, I've, prob I've probably been with Osset for, well, 15 years, I would have said, if not more. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even 30 yet, so that tells you how old I was when I started uh, started with Osset. Um, I've been lucky to see a lot of very, very, very good anglers come through this team, and, and some have moved on to pastures new and are now probably out what I would class as the best in the world, your likes of uh, Lee Kerry, Andy Geldart. There's a, there's a lot of very good anglers that have been through this team and moved on. Yes. But I started um, many moons ago, my brother actually um, is also officially don't go now. And um, my brother started, joined, uh, sort of joined us at a young age. He's four years older than me. Well, and that's he was, Chris, isn't it? That's Chris, yeah. yeah. He was probably, I don't know, 15 at the time. So I'll have been 11 years old. And, uh, he joined my, my dad at the time wanted to get my brother into the uh, young england team yeah so he joined he joined Osset to try and prove his sort of canal quality of fishing and like i said there were some very good anglers at the time so i used to come and walk bank for probably seven or eight years of just literally sat behind some some of the lads and i still i count some of them as my very good friends now i used to sit behind mick lodge a lot which is still fishes for our team now and yeah it is probably one of the best anglers that anyone can sit behind and learn from because although he won't admit it, he's very, very good. Yeah. So I used to sit behind it, the likes of him, and just take on everything that was happening, Tom. And, yeah. and I would recommend that to any young angler that, that's that's going fishing these days and wants to get into anything like this sort of fishing. Yeah. Honestly, you can't do anything wrong by sitting and asking the right questions or just taking in what's going on in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's without me. I did that for, I don't know, seven or eight years before my brother moved on and stopped fishing. And gradually, I've just worked my way in. I mean, I've been fishing now with the team for probably, like I say, in the team for probably 10 years now. And if, if it weren't for my dad, which I thank uh, my dad for everything, but if it weren't for my dad, I probably wouldn't be here. But, it, it, you know, there's, these are my group of mates that end up there outside of fishing as well as in fishing. And yes. we all get on like we are mates, you know, so... That's that's the story of uh, of me and this team. But yeah, I'm probably one of the, well, I am definitely the, the longest serving Osset man here today, even though I'm the youngest Osset man here today. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? So the, the little part of the story that people might be interested in there, but I think you've skipped over being modest. <laughs> but you did actually fish for England yourself a few times at I, youth I, level. I did, mate, yeah. So um, again, I f followed in my brother's footsteps. Um, once I got old enough and sort of thought 13, 14 years old, I've wanted to buy a cherry of what my brother had and thought I'm having to go to this England uh, England a bit. So I went on trials myself and, you know, like anyone else, I went for a few years and got knocked back and learning, coming on this canal, to be fair, learned me loads. Back in that time, it was all Bloodworm and Joker on this canal and obviously yes. Fib's rules, is a lot of it is Bloodworm and Joker fishing. So I learned loads, sat behind certain people or going fishing, that sort of fishing, and then I was lucky enough to get picked at um, Gold Valley mm -hmm. in, I think it was 2009, 2010, which was bloodworm fishing for sort of skimmers, Tom, and went to Italy, and that were lovely fishing, little pommies and roach, and from then on, we just, yeah, carried on until I got to the point where I was a bit old, and probably that, once I'd done it, and I, I couldn't chase the dream that, I mean, I, I'd love to, fish for my country one day again but you know there's a lot of time and effort and unfortunately I am a family man with uh, with kids and whatever so I can't yeah. put the time and effort in now to even think about chasing the main dream now but um, you know to represent your country is something I'll always be proud of and my dad oh, is one of only 
Oops. I think he might be the only, if only one other person to have both of his kids represent um, the country at, at fishing, like, so yeah. both me and my brother, so fair play to my dad as well. He obviously he obviously travelled us round the whole country going wherever we needed to go to be on the right matches, so there's a bit of thank yeah. you to my dad there, I suppose, as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, no, mate, as I said, you've had a, a blistering, blistering year this year. It's a testament, really, to the effort you put into your fish, I mean, but you've, you have. I mean, there can't be many people who've won more on the, on the canals around here. No, and, and I mean, like I say, you've got to draw the right pegs, Tom, but I am, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but I suppose everyone has them runs, and I'm in one of them at the minute where everything just seems to fall right for me. Yeah. I, I do spend a lot of time and effort um, within my fishing, you know, prepping and whatever else. Which probably as a chat, uh, as a younger kid, I didn't. You know, I went out drinking and partying or whatever, yeah. like we all do. But as I've got older and you know, got my own house and my little tackle room and my own room in house to do it in, you know, I think that helps massively with prepping. And you don't turn up anymore with, you know, on a Saturday after being out Friday night, which. I think that helps, but I mean, I'm in a good run at the minute, and oh, long may it continue. Oh, absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. come off. Right, I want to just finish by asking you very quickly, mate, about the old pole. So, another browning pole you This is a browning pole. Now, anyone who knows me, uh, uh, me and heavy handed come together. I'm not, right. I'm not one for. Um, to me, this is a piece of, and this may sound really horrible to say, but it's a piece of equipment to do a job. I, I, I don't go home and wash it every night and... and you don't wash go, the either, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and go to, you know, I definitely don't go to bed with it, I don't like that. But, you know, it gets one wash a year, it gets out of the bag every week, and this is a Z92, and I've had this pole for, well, to be fair, I've had since bought another one, and I have two now as a, as a backup, but it, honestly, I've had this pole for probably going on five or six years now and I mean fair enough I can hold it like that 16 meters and I understand the sphere thing but if you're in, honestly in the market for a pole where you can you know be a bit more rough and tumble with the design poles I, I, I definitely 100% will get another one because for me they're uh, bang on for the sort of fishing I do, you know. River Don where you're having to shove it through brambles up a bank and whatever else, mm. it's perfect for that. Absolutely. Well, it's been lovely talking to you. Now, there was some debate going on uh, when I arrived here as to who the best looking well, Ben was between you and the chap to your left, wasn't there? I'm about to end that debate because we've decided that the only reason I've come today is so the um, audience percentage is up with women. Ah, OK. So I'm definitely the better looking one of the two. I mean, you make your own mind up, but... I think, you know... I think I edge it. I think if Tyson Fury can be hit with a woman, I don't see why you can't, Ben, ex have you? Ex exactly, mate. Yeah. That bods are the, are the future. Oh, that's it. And if, uh, at the end of the day, if, you know, if, if Tyson Fury could catch hybrids like this or ropes like this, <laughs> then, you know... It'd be even better, wouldn't it? But what chance have you got when you can swing them in like that, Tom? Exactly. Ooh. Lovely. Well, we'll let you get back in, and then we'll have a. Take... What's happened? There? I've not got a tangle. I don't know. It looks that way, doesn't it? So you so are. Do you know human. when, you know you when, I, human, you know when I, I said to you though that I'm having one of them seasons? Yeah. Well, it's not just oh, come it hasn't end, happened. It? it hasn't. I, th I thought it was just going to. You know, you just pulled out. I thought it's just going to pull out. This, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that just shows not, really not when you were Clem Cats out though, Tom. Not no. when you were Clem Cats out. That's it. Lovely. Right, we'll go and see Mr. Holmes. Now this lad has been smashing up the commercials as long as I've been alive and then recently turned to, I said recently, how long ago was it really when you turned to Osset and more team fishing mate, six think, years? Yeah, I bet, I bet it was Tom, yeah about six years I think. But we first met didn't we, I think it was Little John Lakes many moons ago when they just stocked it with millions of little carp. And yeah, back you, in the day. Yeah, I mean you used to absolutely tear it up at that venue and all the sorts of commercials. <laughs> Um, lucky enough to be only five minutes away from my house, so yeah, it was lucky. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. But what made you, mate? What made you turn from from that? Cause, I mean, a lot of younger anglers now just go down that route, don't they? Just commercials. But you chose team fishing as well. So what 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 turned me was I used to go to a place called Sherwood Forest Farm Park. Yeah. I used to fish it on a, a Wednesday and a Sunday, 
Sundays were evening matches mm. and the Wednesdays were day matches. Yeah. And I got to a stage where you were catching the same fish. So it just put me off. You, right. you'd, you'd have a net of fish, say you'd catch 100, 100 pound, and you'd catch one and go, I've caught that, I've already caught that fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 was an, it was enough for me. I just thought, no, I need a change. Yeah. It was either that or pack in. So really, that, that yeah, that, yeah. That's, what, that's how it got me. Yeah. So I went, I, obviously, I was lucky enough to get asked because I'm good friends with Chris, mm. and I was lucky enough to get asked to fish with Osset, and it's changed my fishing. Yeah. Totally changed it. What do you enjoy most about team fishing, mate? Uh, just the, the atmosphere and how everybody sort of interacts. Yeah. Really good team. Probably. Well, I think it's probably one of the best teams in the country. Yes. You know, what I mean, they, they, they're just a nice bunch of kids, and they're, they're so they're brilliant anglers, mate. Yeah. It's it's a different level. It, it just puts you in a different stead, mate. Yeah. There's, there's, there's such top top lads. And I know, um, obviously, we've been mates for a long time. I know how you you look at your fishing, and it's very much about um, enjoying your fishing, enjoying your day yeah. out, and and the whole experience. Yeah, I'm I'm not there to to just plunder a venue, mate. I'm not there for the money. I think things like that. It's about the fishing for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like. I like the ver the variations and the. It's catching the fish. It's not. It's not just about going and taking people's money. It's. It's. That's not what fishing's about. No, it's no. about enjoying the fishing. And, and something else I've always admired about your approach to fishing and everything is, you know, and, and I'm similar actually. I think we're both very, very similar. Is you really you're an evil devil when you want to be you want to win and you, and you see like anybody can be beat on the day and the number of times you've said to me you know like the pursuit against a, a Barnsley team that's yeah. sort of starts and you're like we'll have them we'll have them come on they're only numbers aren't they yeah that's how I look at it they're only numbers mate we've all we've all been there we've all beat them they're, 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 only, they're only numbers not to be feared mate no absolutely they're only human mate they are flesh and blood just like us, mate. Yeah, of course like they are. Yeah, they're not, they're not robots, are they? So, talk us through what you're doing today, because um, obviously I've asked everybody to do something a bit different, and you're on a, a shorter line there, but you've also primed a line with hemp, haven't you? I have, yeah, hopefully. I'm going to catch on it later on. A bit, bit of a, hopefully, catch some big roach and stuff later on. So, I've fished, I'm fishing that at 13 metres, my hemp line. Yeah. I've put 200 mil of hemp in at the start, scattered it over a good area. Yeah. Then I'm just pinging the odd bit over the top. And then the shorter line is at nine meters. I just put two balls of ground bait in, with a few dead pinkies in, and yeah. then literally just dropping a pinky over the top and catching. Take the roach every single time. Roach a chuck, yeah, lovely, lovely roach. Just nice, simple fishing, mate. Yeah. As they say, simple fishing, simple angler. <laughs> <I'll go that laughs> far. Now, you've obviously today got a browning pole on a little dabble, and I think it's the one that you won in the. Our partner a couple of years ago. Yes, yeah, so I, was, I was lucky enough to uh, obviously partner Pat, and we uh, we went and won it. And I, was, I got the PT, which I've used ever since we've ever since I won it, and it's what a piece of kit. Yeah. Use it for everything, cart, whether it's cart fishing or whether it's roach fishing or river fishing, everything. It just yeah. covers everything. Absolutely. Lovely piece of kit. Now it um, it's interesting to see you know just walking along the line today. Obviously, um, everybody's using. Everybody who's pole fishing using in browning poles. Yeah. And the thing that strikes me, which I think is so important for a natural venue angler to see, is how long people have had these poles and how well they've lasted. You know. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, are workhorses, aren't they? Yeah, the proper pieces of kit. They don't, they don't seem to wear out or anything like that. I've, I've even got one of the originals, the, the Champions Choice. Mm. I've still got one of them at home when I, when, I, when I first started. So just shows you how long they do last. Right. As you're the last angler in the line, I'm going to be uh, futuristic, mate. So obviously we've got a big year coming up. We're in yeah, 2022. Yeah. What uh, What are you most excited about fishing with Osset this year? Would you say? Um, it's got to be the Census Challenge on the Gloucester yes. if it goes ahead. I've, I'm I'm looking really looking forward to that. I'd like I'd like to uh, go down and catch some big breams. Hopefully, if it pays off. Well, it, uh, yeah. That, that's the uh, that's the one I'm really looking forward to. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a, a special, a special match. We're we'll against the French as well on that one, not just yeah, the English. Not, yeah, we've, 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 we've beat the English, so let's have a go at the French now, isn't it? That's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can smash them up. I love it. Well, Ben, keep going strong, and uh, yeah, we will cool. hopefully be reporting some uh, great success on the Blaster Canal. Let's do it, yeah, defo. Well, 
there you have it folks. Hopefully that's shown you a little bit more about Browning T Mosset and the approaches you need to succeed on venues like the Stainforth and Kiba Canal where we are today. For more information on any of the products on display, have a look at the website below. That will show you everything in the Browning UK range. Thanks for watching.